when a ship goes aground in a gale, a yacht capsizes, or a doctor has to be taken to an injured seaman, the cry is, call out the lifeboat. Our volunteer crews never hesitate. The whole operation is smooth, quick, and efficient. Because there is an excellent, up-to-date organization behind them to back them up 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are 140 lifeboat stations round our coasts, and these include Ireland, all of them at instant readiness. Many people driving north from London may have seen this building, apparently a factory, on the A1. The lifeboat flag flying from it signifies that this is the RNLI's Pair Depot. Gained at sea and on the coast as a district inspector of lifeboats, who is called the superintendent. Let him tell you of something of his work and responsibility. From lifeboat stations all round the coast of Britain and Ireland come demands for gear which we must supply. Come and see how we do it. But first, here is a model of a typical fishing village with a lifeboat station, Coverack in Cornwall. We have paintings and models of lifeboats of all periods. This is a bust of Grace Darling, whose famous rescue is still remembered as an act of great courage. Below her is a model of the first lifeboat specially designed for the Lifeboat Institution by George Palmer in 1826. Every day I make a round of the depot and usually find something to discuss with the assistant superintendent. The depot switchboard is manned 24 hours a day and is in constant touch with all stations and with head office by direct line. Lifeboat Depot, yes. I'll put you through to the stores. Connecting you now. This is what we call the light store. There are no fewer than 40,000 separate items kept at the depot, any one of which may be required at a lifeboat station at a moment's notice. All have to be in perfect condition, carefully checked, and found immediately they are needed. Every conceivable spare part is in this store, from split pins to propellers, from nuts and bolts to navigation lights. New pattern steering wheels have superseded the more familiar wooden wheels with spokes. The new plastic oil skins have now taken the place of the old oiled canvas. And these plastic oil skins are more efficient in every way. The old ones always got sticky. In the record office, details are kept of the different requirements of each lifeboat. The right piece of equipment must be sent. Mistakes must not be made. Here, one of the staff checks the part required for an engine. Every part has a number, and every number is in this book. A lifeboat engine which has been overhauled and tested at the depot is now ready for issue to a boat. Different boats require different kinds of rudders. Here are two very different types. Mooring anchors are used to allow the boat to lie afloat when she is unable to rehouse owing to weather conditions. This is a typical batch of stores for dispatch to the coast, awaiting packing and loading. 
you will see a storekeeper checking the demand. The depot is run like a ship. Time for the midday break. In the canteen hangs a painting of a gold medal rescue at Moilvra, Anglesey. Carpenters and riggers, typists and telephonists all take their midday meal here. About 80 to 100 meals are served every day. Morning and afternoon tea is served here too. So you will see the canteen staff are kept busy. In the paint shop, a sign writer is at work on a service board for a lifeboat station. You may have seen one of these on the coast. Now we visit the machine shop. A very large number of special pieces of equipment are made at the depot. One of the big lathes turning a propeller shaft for a 52-foot lifeboat. The welding department, where damaged propellers, one of the normal hazards of the service, are being repaired. Great precision is necessary in this work. A skilled fitter works a drilling machine. The foreman 